Hello again. In this video I'm going to show you how to bandage the edges of your roof including decking board joints if you have them. This laminate bandage strengthens the edges of your roof and needs to be done in preparation for laying the main roof laminate in the next video. If you haven't done so already, sweep the roof free of any particles that may be on the surface of the roof. Next, it's important to wipe down the surfaces of the trims with a clean rag and some acetone. Even if the trims look clean, contaminants from oil, for instance on your skin, or handling may be on the surface. Don't take chances. And if for any reason you have used a section of trim upside down, it may have a shiny surface rather than the matte finish that the top has. Sand this down with 40 to 60 grade grit paper so it has a nice rough surface. When that's been done and the trims are clean, we can turn our attention to bandaging. Now, because I use standard 8x4 square edged OSB3, instead of the tongue and groove version we talked about in video 1, I'm going to have to bandage the joint in the middle of the roof to strengthen it. But before I can laminate any open joint with resin and fiberglass, I will have to put tape over the joint first. This is an important step for at least three reasons. Firstly, it stops resin bleeding through the matting and dripping onto things below. And if the resin later cures into a stalactite structure, it can make clicking noises at a later stage. Finally, it will keep the resin on the decking, so the laminated matting becomes fully impregnated with resin, meaning no pinholes. To tape the joint, all we need is some good quality 50mm masking tape and rub it firmly onto the decking, straddling both boards. The only trouble I've found with masking tape over the years is that some of it is prone to curling away from the decking, particularly on a hot day or if I have some masking tape that just won't play ball. Recently though I've taken to using gaffer tape as it sticks better and resists scuffing from shoes. Here on this demo roof I've used both, just to show them being used. Now the joint in the board has been taped over, we can break out a roll of chop strand matte bandage. This comes already cut at 75mm or 3 inches wide and can simply be ripped in your hand to the correct length. If it's just a small job and you don't want to purchase a full roll of this, you can cut your own from a roll of chop strand mat that you'll be using later on for the decking. As you can see here, I've laid the bandages on the roof in position, so I know everything fits perfectly. Now we have the bandage for all four roof trims as well as the all important bandage for my roof deck join in the middle. When you're happy, place them ready to go in order so you have them on hand ready to fit when we start laminating. On a windy day, just place something heavy on top of them to stop them blowing away. Now we're ready to mix up our first small batch of resin. This certainly won't take much, not a lot more than one litre will do this. And as it's a hot day, I've been keeping my resins in the shade up until now. If you are unused to fiberglassing, don't mix more than one or two litres for your bandages. You don't need to feel rushed, and you can always mix more. Make sure that you gather all your kit together ready to go. Good preparation is the key to a stress-free nice job. Here is what I've got ready in this picture. Two 5 litre paint scuttles marked internally in litres. One is a spare that hopefully I won't be using. One 150mm or 6 inch fin roller for consolidating the bandage later. Two disposable 50mm or 2 inch brushes. Again one spare just in case I drop one handle first into the resin which I did. Two 100mm or 4 inch mini resin rollers. These little rollers are great for detail work and bandaging. The roofing resin and a square edged mixing stick and just out of shot is the hardener, but you'll see me use that in just a moment. Now, rather than me boring you with the endless ifs, buts and maybes of catalysts and resin ratios, temperatures and all that sort of advice, just read it on the website link at the end of the video or in the description bar. It's all on there and more, so read it and digest it at your leisure. Anyway, enough talk, let's do a mix, but please make sure you're wearing full wraparound eye protection. It's very, very important. In order to get a good view of what I'm doing, let's switch over to the head cam. 
Remember, always keep the lid on resins. They're very flammable until cured and could easily be kicked over. Now I'm adding just over one litre of resin to the bucket and I know this because it's marked out internally inside. Next I'm drawing up 40 millilitres of catalyst into the syringe which works out at about 3% ratio. You can see how quickly a syringe will inject the catalyst deep into the resin. I find not only will it mix quicker and better but it cuts down on splashing and flicking that can happen with traditional dispensing methods. Then mix thoroughly, done. Now it's time to wet the decking and trim and a small roller is perfect for this job. On a small roof like this you can wet the whole roof all at once or certainly all of one side but on a larger roof it may be easier to roll the bandage out onto the wet deck as you go. All I'm doing is applying the resin so it's nice and wet but not running. Halfway onto the trim and halfway onto the decking. Once it looks even with no dry spots, I place the bandage into position. A quick roll up and down stops it from blowing away. Apply more resin on top until the bandage is saturated with resin and no visible holes can be seen. While I wait for the resin to break down the bonding agent in the bandage I've just done, I can turn my attention to the rear bandage. Again, after the initial wetting of the deck, press the bandage into it, then more resin on top and roller it through the mat. Now the bandage between the roof board joints. If you put the resin on too thick, just push it around to where you need it. Any that's spare or spills onto the decking, roller it flat or pick it up on the roller and move it about. Now putting down my last but one bandage, but if you notice my other bandages are starting to turn transparent. This means the binding agent in the matting has started to break down and they're ready to be consolidated with a paddle roller or fin roller. And the front edge is my last bandage. Here I'm using a consolidating roller on the bandage and if it's a large roof it really does help to get a second person to follow you up but obviously I can't spare the cameraman so it's down to me. Now I'm using this small fin roller to get rid of any visible air bubbles or lumps. Bandaging the roof will help as a practice run with catalyst ratios and drying times for the main laminate that we'll be laying in the next video. If it's too fast or slow, you can alter the ratio for the main laminate. Finally, I'm just using the same resin roller to flatten it again, not that it needs it. And that's the roof done, fully taped and bandaged. Next, I'm going to bandage the mitres trim joints and raised edge upstands. Let's swap our attention to the two rear mitre joints with the D260 trim. All I've done here is rip off a small section of bandage just long enough to cover and reinforce the mitre joints. Wet the matting first in the bucket and hold it by the dry section. Then place it into position before the binding agent breaks it down and it becomes all floppy. Make sure it's fully impregnated with resin and a jabbing motion with the tip of the brush should remove all the air bubbles. 
You can also use exactly the same technique to laminate the join in the roof trims. With that done, it's time to finish the open ends of the raised edge trims. My technique here is to cut a section of chop strand mat that will wrap 50 millimeters around every face of the open end. A few snips may have to be made to allow it to bend and be movable before the binding agent becomes fully broken down. I normally do something like this. quick wet out in the bucket onto the mating surfaces of the matting and the trim face. Alternatively if you find it easier you can fill the ends or tape over the ends before laminating. You should then be able to tap it gently onto the face and adjust its position while it holds itself there. Jab any springy sections of matting into place with more resin. Once it's about right, move on to your next open end and do exactly the same thing again. While you're doing this, the bonding agent on the matting on the end you've just left will be breaking down nicely, ready for you to go back and finish it. If the matting does go saggy over the open end, Stretch it outwards in all directions gently just to correct it. And there you go, as simple as that. Now when we put the main laminate on, in the next video everything will be fully bonded together and reinforced. Well, that brings the preparation to an end. I'll see you in the next video where we will be laying the main roofing laminate. See you there.